Good morning, television family. Thanks for starting your day with us. We're back out of here. We're going to work. We're not going to work real hard, but we'll be here delivering you local information and local, well, TV. It is Tuesday, the 26th day of March, 2024. I'm Dan Kuntz. This is Wake Up in Angie Valley. A couple of clouds out there, 39 degrees. Quite a bit of sunshine today. More sunshine than clouds, but a few clouds passing by. A little on the windy side. Temperature about normal. Significant rain expected pretty much all day Wednesday. In fact, tomorrow morning we could see some light snow in some locations. Snow level is going to drop down to about 1,900 feet. Uh, then it's going to go up to about pass level. And we're going to have a lot of rain on Wednesday. Very cold as well. A good maybe 10 degrees below normal on Wednesday. Things dry out, start improving on Thursday. Easter weekend looks really good. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and right on into Monday. Those details are coming up, plus news. Lots of things to talk about. Keep you informed of what's going on in North Central Washington and the Wenatchee Valley. In sports, the Gonzaga women back in the Sweet 16 for the first time in, what, nine years? I think the last time they went to the Sweet 16, 2015, something like that. They took care of business. They beat Utah in the kennel last night. We'll have highlights. We'll have a complete prep schedule for you as well. Busy Tuesday for the local high schoolers. And in the back half of the program, don't t turn your channel because you're going to want to see this interview. We had a chance to go out and visit with everybody's friend, Ed Nags. Ed, of course, longtime coach and teacher at Wenatchee High School, head coach at the Wenatchee Apple Sox for a long time, winning this coach in franchise history, led him to a bunch of championships. Ed uh, lives pretty much year-round now in, in Southern California, where he's from. But on Wednesday, May 1st, Ed is going to start a run, and he's going to run all the way from Paul Thomas Senior Stadium on the campus of Wenatchee Valley College. He's going to leave at 8 a.m., on uh, Wednesday, May 1st, he's going to run all the way to Corvallis, Oregon to raise money for two big causes that are close to his heart. Good for you, Ed. An interview you don't want to miss with Ed Nags in the back half of the program. Let's do our tour on this Tuesday morning. Got some pretty good-looking cameras for you today. The Wenatchee Heights camera is up and running. Now that we're through, you know, daylight saving has really kicked in. We don't have to worry about the show starting in the dark anymore, and we won't. Uh, until probably October, we'll always have daylight when the show, when the live version of the show begins at 7 o'clock. So from the Wenatchee Heights camera, sunrise this morning, 6.50, sunset tonight, 7.23. I think we can safely call it tonight. 12 hours and 33 minutes of daylight. We hit 55 yesterday, our normal is 56, so it was pretty much a normal day for this time of the year. And we'll be right around that 56, 57 degree mark later on today. Lake Wenatchee, the snow is finally starting to melt around Kaler Glen, as you can see. It looks like you're finally seeing some green grass there. It always takes a while. Snow continues to retreat up on Dirty Face and in the mountains directly feeding into the, uh, Lake Wenatchee, the Little Wenatchee, and the White River. So it's looking good up there, although they could get a little bit of snow tomorrow morning. Well, that's just the way it is. It's still spring. you got to remember about that. It's still early spring, for that matter. We used the Apollonius camera turned around the other day, and I liked it so much we're going to do it again. That's the camera high above the Apollonius Antique Mall in Kashmir, but we have it flipped around to point to the upper valley, up towards Dryden and Peshastin. And those clouds up there look a tad threatening, do they not? Stein Hill on your far left, beautiful view from just a little sliver of Kashmir, but all the way up to uh, Dryden and Peshastin, and up to McNeil Canyon. The very tip-top look at the sun just starting to bathe the shores of Lake Chelan from high atop McNeil Canyon, just peeking over the loop there. You can see a little sliver of Chelan on your left, but not much, and the snow continues to recede in the mountains high above Lake Chelan. Gorgeous views this morning. Just a little bit of light mountain snow is going to be coming your way overnight tonight into Wednesday morning. So if you're traveling basically, oh, say 11 p.m., Tonight, all the way through early Thursday morning, you will be dealing with some light mountain snow. So just some light snow in the, uh, in the coldest part of the days during the evening and the early morning hours. So I, I don't think it's going to really accumulate, and it's going to be wet snow if it's any snow at all. But it's just a friendly reminder, you may find some winter driving conditions if you're traveling over the mountain passes. Best chance is some snow, by the way, in the mountain passes is going to be early tomorrow morning, and then a slight chance of snow Wednesday night into Thursday. So no real snow expected in the daylight hours, but I just want to let you know about that. From the National Weather Service, sunshine and quite a bit of it. We do have some clouds now. They'll be thinning out. We'll top off at about 56 degrees. Little breezy 
today, but not as windy as they were expecting. Now they say about 6 to 14 miles an hour. They were saying maybe closer to 20 today. So it's going to be breezy, but not real windy. And most of that will be in the afternoon hours. Increasing clouds tonight, so they'll be coming back. The wind will be dying down, though, in the overnight hours. 36 for the overnight low. Should be dry tonight. Wednesday, in the very early morning hours, we're talking 5, 6, 7, could get a little bit of light snow in some of our viewing area because the snow level is going to be down to about 1,900 feet. And then the rains come. It's going to be quite wet. We're, well, we have a 100% chance of rain, so get ready for some rain on Wednesday. Uh, quite a bit of it at times. At the high of only 47, I'll keep in mind our normal high is 56, so going to cool down quite a bit. Rain tapers off Wednesday night. Snow level goes down to 3,100 feet, so we're not going to get any snow. Uh, lots of clouds, 36 for the overnight low. To Thursday we go. A little bit of light snow, possible, I don't think so. It's snow level is going to be too high. Outside of that, partly sunny, still cool, high of 53, and then things get pretty nice. By the time we get to Friday, a mixture of clouds and sun, but we'll be warming up to slightly above normal. And then we're looking good for Easter weekend. Saturday, 61. Sunday, 65. 70. On Monday, April 1st, so April is going to come in looking good. And of course, the long term forecast for the month of April calls for warmer than normal temperatures and normal precipitation. We shall see. All right, that's a forecast I can live with. It's six minutes after the hour. The news is next. You're watching Wake Up on Angie Valley, Tuesday edition on the NCW Life Channel. A ductless unit from Carrier can keep anyone comfortable. Take Shelly, for instance. She finds me time in her new attic turned home gym. And with her Carrier ductless unit, the temperature is always perfect, no matter how intense her workout gets. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. The Lake Chelan Chamber of Commerce presents Wonders of Wooden Avenue. As Chelan's premier lifestyle store, Willow, find unique home decor, clothing, jewelry, and more. Come visit for a welcoming and memorable shopping experience. Lake Chelan Sports is the place to find top brands like Hoka, Ons, Patagonia, and now a full line of Warrior products. With excellent customer service, Lake Chelan Sports has what you need. Wonders of Wooden Avenue, North Central Washington's premier shopping district. select Kubota equipment. Part of the number one rated tractor brand for durability and owner experience in the U.S., they offer the versatility and reliability to get the job done right all year round. Right now, bring home select VX and L-Series tractors for zero down, 0% 0 APR for 72 months. Contact your Kubota dealer for details. Very pleasant morning. Just a couple of clouds out there, 39 degrees. The sun will have the upper hand, a little wind at times. A afternoon high about normal, right around 56, 57. Rain all day Wednesday, tapers off Wednesday night, and a very pleasant Easter weekend is coming our way. It's nine minutes after the hour. The Eastmont School District will receive an additional $7 million in state matching funds if voters pass their school construction bond measure come April. When the $117 million bond went uh, to the ballots to the voters in February, Eastmont's projected state match was $21 million. Now that number is now up to $27 million after the Washington State legislators, le Legislature's increase in state-provided construction funds. In a press release, State Senator Brad Hawkins shared that the influx of revenue from the capital gains tax came in higher than anticipated, and by law, that revenue must be spent on school facilities. Eastmont will try to reach that 60% supermajority again on April 23rd. They want to address the outdated facilities at Cascade, Kenroy, Lee, and Rock Island Elementary Schools. 
Rivercom, the 911 service for Chelan and Douglas counties is once again short staffed and now they say they will pay bonuses to retain and recruit its essential telecommunicators. Chelan County Commissioner Tiffany Gehring holds a seat on the Rivercom board and she says just 21 of the agency's 31 positions are filled right now. The incentive program approved by the board last week includes $2,000 and $3,000 bonuses for telecommunicators who stay with the agency until set dates later in the year. And Garen says the board is also considering a referral program that rewards recommendations leading to a new hire and a $5,000 bonus for new hires who come on board fully trained. Medical sensors to monitor the health of inmates are now up and running. At the Chelan County Regional Justice Center, the jail, which receives bookings from multiple counties and cities, is the first in the state to install the remote monitors. They're manufactured by Research Solutions of Kentucky. A dozen sensors were purchased for about $74,000. They've been installed in select holding areas. Jail Director Chris Sharp says it's a necessary step to prevent the ongoing trend among inmates of overdoses and over another potentially fatal medical conditions. Public agencies and partners in and around the Lake Chelan area are stepping up their efforts to keep invasive species out of the crystal blue waters of Lake Chelan. They want to keep ahead of this. Voluntary boat inspections began last year to help keep the lake free of quagga mussels and other invaders. In fact, they, ch they checked 1,400 boats at the lake's five marinas last year. Chelan County's Natural Resources Department is now going to launch a citizen science program to help lakeside landowners monitor their properties, their docks, and their waterfront. The agency is hosting a public information event. It'll be tomorrow at 5 o'clock at the Chelan Fire Hall. Attendees can learn more about the program and sign up for training so you can spot those evasive species before they can get a toehold. Confluence Health Hospital celebrated its 2,000th medical procedure with a pretty cool robot. It's called the Da Vinci Robot. They did this on Friday and they did it by hosting students from Wenatchee High School to test out the machine. The device is used to perform surgeries that are not invasive. NCW Life caught up with Confluence surgeon Katherine Straub at the event to learn more about robotic assisted surgeries. My name is Dr. Kate Straub. I've been a general surgeon here in Wenatchee for about 13 years. This is my first job after completing my surgical training. I've been working on the Da Vinci robot, the XI robot, for four years now. Um, and I made the transition to it once I started seeing significant changes in what it could do for my patients. Once I decided to start being a robotic surgeon, it was about a six month process of taking classes and practicing on the robot, bringing in proctors and finding just the right patients. Um, but since then, it's uh, really taken off for me. I've done about 250 cases on the robot, anything from simple gallbladder surgery to more complex pancreas cancer surgeries and a lot of hernia repairs. The benefits that I've seen in operating on the robot through smaller incisions, I can do more complex surgeries through smaller incisions than I could during using our traditional laparoscopic means, um, meaning smaller incisions, less pain for patients, less manipulation of the tissues on the inside, meaning that uh, patients recover faster from surgeries. I'm able to do more complex hernia repairs in ways that get patients back to fuller function faster. Um, patients are spending much less time in the hospital after their surgery, and that's not only great for the patient, but also great for the hospital where we're frequently so full and it's wonderful to see patients go home faster and not have to be here for so long recovering. Um, and I think my colleagues in gynecology and urology have noticed the same thing, seeing patients going home the same day or the next day after surgeries where they would frequently have been in the hospital for a few days. So overall, I see this as a huge benefit for patients. It's a benefit for surgeons because operating on the robot is less taxing to our bodies and allows us to stay productive in surgery for much longer into our careers. And it's good for the community overall, making sure that the Wenatchee Valley is getting the most up-to-date uh, surgical options for patients. So overall, it's, it's a win for everybody. And finally, the First United Methodist Church here in Wenatchee was recently the target of an email scam. The scam asked parishioners to purchase gift cards for sick cancer patients. We caught up with the Reverend Debbie Sperry to hear about the scam and how her congregation handled it.
we had someone create a false email for a church member. We didn't know that at the time, but we received an email from a church member with first and last name at a known domain. And uh, they said, I have a new email address. Please update our database. And could you please send me another copy of our directory? So we did that, and one of us was suspicious about that request, and so we reached out directly via text for a number that we had on file and said, do you have a new email? And that individual said, no, I do not. So we knew that it was suspicious. We knew it was problematic. And within several hours, we had multiple people from the church reaching out to us saying, hey, what about this favor? What can we do for you? Uh, and forwarding us emails that said uh, it was me sending an email, again, from a falsified email address saying, I need a favor, I need you to be discreet, you're the best person for this job. If an individual responded to that email, they were asked to go buy gift cards. And if there was sort of further dialogue, it was gift cards to help people who are battling cancer, to encourage them along the way. And the financial request was for four $500 gift cards. And then the completion of the task, so to speak, was that the individual would take photos of the gift cards, including the PIN numbers, which basically gives them an electronic verification to activate those cards and use them electronically wherever they could. Um, and so that was sort of the final component of what was asked. Fortunately, only two people really took the bait, so to speak. One who did follow through and sent $2,000 worth of gift card information to this scammer, assuming, believing that it was me. Um, the good news for them is they were alerted along the way and were then able to contact their bank, their credit card company, their financial advisor, and the gift card company. And at the end of the day, only $160 had been used, the gift cards were then canceled, and they're working with the fraud departments to reimburse that remaining amount. The other person purchased $1,000 worth of gift cards and said, I wanna give these to you in person. And I said, well, good news, I don't want them. <laughs> I don't need them. And we were able to talk about what solutions might be available. They can't be returned to the store. Um, and they were able to make a necessary purchase in their life with that $1,000. As a pastor, it's really maddening to see somebody ask in my name, uh, using my name in vain, because it's predicated on the trust that I've built with my congregation. And so people believe in me and they believe in the work that we do together and they trust me to represent them in the world and to show up at hospitals and to show up at care facilities and to be with people in a time of crisis. I'm in many ways standing in for them in places and spaces that they cannot. And so when somebody else takes advantage of the trust and the relationship that we have built, it's really maddening. It's really um, humbling because I'm super powerless in it. I mean, I can say over and over again, this isn't me, this isn't how I do business. I would never ask you to do these things. So uh, if I ever you know, knew the individual, I'd probably kick him in the shins, but... Um, <laughs> And that is what's making news on this Tuesday. And if you want to find out what the heck is going on around here, well, we have a department. It's, uh, it's called the News Department. We occasionally call it the What the Heck is Going Around Here Department. I'm talking about the news tonight at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock on TV, 5, 6, and 10 on television. If you are not one of those people who have television, well, you probably do because you're watching the show. But if you watch your television on the web, we got you covered there. Our news will be up and running on our homepage, ncwlife.com, our Facebook page, our YouTube page and on our app, but if you haven't downloaded our app yet, what the heck's the matter with you? Do it. Pick up your smartphone and get her done. There's a QR code, and for news tips, get a hold of us, send us an email, it's the best way to do it, news at ncwlife.com. Gonzaga ladies, boy, they're, they're really good at home, they're really good anywhere. Last night proved that, sports is next. You're watching Wake Up on Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food. Freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. At Coldwell Banker, they're people. 
Their company are cut from a different cloth. They see, hear, sense, and feel things that other people don't. They have a unique appreciation for the thing called home. Because of this dedication, Coldwell Banker has thrived for over a century. This is why they are ranked number one on Agent Trust. Coldwell Banker. They do real estate with higher standards and have been guiding people home since 1906. When you call Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, you're calling on 35 plus years of experience in the Wenatchee Valley. Spending extra time in your home, you may have discovered an unwanted aroma. Stinky feet, pets, who knows what. Call Dick's today about installing their Train Clean Effects Electronic Air Cleaner or a Ream Halo Ultraviolet Air Purifier. Either way, the air quality in your home will be improved. Proudly servicing all of North Central Washington, call 884-6444 today. Sports at 21 minutes after the hour. The Gonzaga women used the three-point shot as your primary weapon last night. And they advanced to the Sweet 16 for the first time in nine years. They beat Utah 77-66 in their own gymnasium. Ball handler, but they were really in a zone of some sort. McQueen with eight points, a couple of triples all the way to the rack. Is Kaylee Trone. Ivins. Trone. Ivins reposting instead. Eliza drills the three. What a matchup this has been with Vieta and Kaylee Trong. Quick shot, Maxwell. You bet. Could have been a four-point play. With Utah making the threes now. The Zags have made seven out of their last nine, and four different players have shot it. And will this be the fifth? Wow. Yes. Ivins says third quarter underway. That's not how you want to start. Ejim, pick, and the deuce. Place is going nuts. 35 straight here at the kennel. Oh, Step don't back. go under. Step don't go back. under. Oh, Mike, you're reading my mind, buddy. And Ejim sprints the floor. Now you got the Trong sisters involved. Biggest lead of the game right now for Gonzaga. You're looking at it. Inside, blocked by Peely. shot clock. You got to put it up if you're Kaylin. Oh! Peely. But that's it. Gonzaga has now won 36 straight games at home. They got a tough one though Friday night. Number one seed Texas. We'll take on Gonzaga in Portland Friday night at 7 o'clock on ESPN. Just one more game left that doesn't count for the Mariners. Yesterday, they beat the Padres in San Diego. The final there is 4-1. to Ty France with 3-for-3 three three with an RBI. One more game today in San Diego, 1-10 in the afternoon. You can watch that on Root Sports. They got tomorrow off. And then opening day, Thursday night against the Red Sox at T-Mobile Park. Kraken, of course, have lost eight games in a row. They are falling down big time. They'll see if they can... Right the ship tonight, the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim are in town at Climate Pledge Arena, 7 o'clock on Route Sports Northwest. Right now, it doesn't look like the Kraken are going to make the Stanley Cup playoffs. The math just doesn't add up. The prep soccer schedule to the pitch they go. Both the uh, local schools will be on the road in Yakima, the gateway to Wapato. Eastman will be at Eisenhower at 7 o'clock, Wenatchee at West Valley at 7 o'clock, and Moses Lake entertains Sunnyside at 7 o'clock. Earlier in the day, Ellensburg will play host to Prosser, and the Afraida boys will play host to East Valley. The smaller schools will also be busy today. Chelan will host Cascade and Caribou Trail League action at 4 o'clock. OMAC welcomes Quincy to town at 6 o'clock. Also at 4 o'clock is Bridgeport and Okanagan in B play. Pateras will be at Brewster at 4.30 and Oroville at Libertyville 
on the pitch also at 430. Baseball, three games in no. West Valley will be at Recreation Park in Wenatchee at 4 o'clock. We'll have the game for you on the NCAA Live channel. Afreda in a non-leaguer at Eastmont at Dan Whitefield also at 4 o'clock. Moses Lake welcomes Eisenhower for a single game at Larson Field at 4 o'clock. And for the smaller schools, Manson welcomes Tenasket at 3.30. Bridgeport welcomes Waterville Mansfield at 4.30. Also at 4.30, it's Brewster at Okanagan and Liberty Bell plays host to Lake Roosevelt. Can't forget about prep softball. All of these are single games with the exception of Cashmere and Kiona Benton. That'll be a doubleheader at 3 o'clock. At 4.30, it's Shalana Cascade, Omaha at Quincy. At 3.30, Tenasket at Manson. Waterville Mansfield at Bridgeport at 4.30. Brewster welcomes Okanagan and Fast Pitch and Liberty Bell at Lake Roosevelt. And as we already mentioned, we got baseball today at uh, 3 50 we'll take to the air four o'clock on our facebook page it'll be on tv at seven o'clock it is the wenatchee panthers playing host to west valley at historic recreation park eric ranch to put the call again on our facebook page at four o'clock on tv or as we like to say in the business television at seven and those are just some of the games that people are playing on this 26th day of march the obscure holiday is my favorite you make up your own it's make up your own holiday. There it is. It's make up your own holiday day today. So if you've always wanted to celebrate something that you're into, do it. Today's the day. You can make it national garbage disposal day if you want. I don't care. It's entirely up to you. So today and today only, it is make up your own holiday day today. Although if you do, you know, national garbage disposal day, you could probably use a little more imagination than that. Today in history, it's March 26th. The world champion Seattle Metropolitans. They defeat the Montreal Canadiens in Seattle 9-1 to to win the Stanley Cup. It was the best three of five back in those days. Seattle becomes the first United States-based team to win the Stanley Cup. It was the first Stanley Cup to be, ever be played in the United States. All the games were played in Seattle because it was hard to travel between Montreal and Seattle back in 1917. And this was the last Stanley Cup final that did not have a team from the National Hockey League in it and win in it. The Seattle Metropolitans are the Stanley Cup champions of 1917. Way to go, guys. I don't think any of the players are around to celebrate, though, anymore. 90 years ago today, Great Britain rolled out something that the rest of the world thought was not a bad idea, and they're going to go ahead and do it. Drivers, getting a driver's license, all you had to do was show up and get a driver's license. You didn't have to prove you could operate a car with competency, like you won't run into things. Uh, Great Britain said, you know, we should probably at least have minimum requirements for people to operate an automobile, and that was the very first ever driver's license issued after a driving test. It was Great Britain who introduced the idea of a driving test. Before that, you could get a driver's license. You didn't need to prove you could drive a car. You just go get one. Great Britain said, nah, we're going to test you to make sure you know what you're doing, what the signs mean, and how to operate an automobile. They rolled it out 90 years ago today, and the rest of the world has since followed suit. But I have been in some countries where I think they just give out driver's licenses, like on street corners, because these people scare the hell out of me. Happy birthday to the driving test 90 years ago today. 45 years ago today, America gathered in front of their television sets and watched Larry Bird and the Indiana State Sycamores do battle with Magic Johnson and the Michigan State Spartans for the national championship in Salt Lake City. Michigan State won 75 to 64. It is still to this day, this has been 45 years since this game was played. It is still to this day the highest rated basketball game in United States television history. The high, now, you know, there have been games that more people watch, but as far as the percentage of people watching the game, it has never been surpassed, the NCAA National Championship game of 1979. And finally, it's hard to believe that the Kingdom only lasted 24 years. That's the front page of the Seattle Times, the day the Kingdom opened. Here's the day the Kingdom went down. On this date in 2000, early on a Sunday morning, because that's when they do it, they implode the King County Domed Stadium, more affectionately known as the King Dome. They blew it up. The King Dome still remains the only arena to host the Major League Baseball All-Star Game, the NBA All-Star Game, and the NFL Pro Bowl. No other stadium can say that. And by the way, King County finally paid off the bonds 
used to build and upkeep the kingdom. They paid off the bonds in 2015, 15 years after the kingdom was blown up. It only lasted 24 years. It seemed like it was longer than that. I, went to, I can't remember how many events I went to the kingdom. Seahawks, college football games, high school football games, rock and roll concerts, Mariners, Mariners. The kingdom was no more. It's the bottom of the hour, birthdays. We lost Sandra Day O'Connor last year at the age of 93, the 91st Associate Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Of course, the first woman justice appointed by Ronald Reagan to replace Potter Stewart. She retired from public life. Her husband died of Alzheimer's disease, and unfortunately, she did as well. Uh, she got a Presidential Medal of Freedom. That ain't bad. I wonder what she would think of today's Supreme Court. Sandra Day O'Connor, born in the state in 1930. Two living celebrities. There were so, a lot of celebrities celebrating birthdays today. I had to narrow it down. Bob Woodward, because he's such a great writer, and All the President's Men is a great book, The Final Days, and all the other books that he's written. Uh, still, a, still affiliated with the Washington Post. He has, a, he has a job title, but he doesn't have to really do anything. Bob Woodward is 81 years old today. And Steven Tyler has made it to 76. That ain't bad. In the late 70s, he was going to be lucky to make it to 30, but he's 76 years old today, the lead singer of Aerosmith. Dream on, baby. Special thanks to our platinum sponsor, Alpine Air. For heat and air, call Alpine Air. This is the good time of the year to have them come on out and make sure your HVAC system will be ready to go when the heat comes this summer. You don't want to call them in July. You want to call them now to make sure your system can handle the upcoming heat because you know it's coming. Special thanks to our friends at Pool to Spa Services. Speaking of heat, get yourself a swimming pool. You'll be glad you did. Just remember that everybody will come over and say, hey, what's going on? And then they'll be in your pool. And finally, our friends at Prestige Senior Living at Colonial Vista. Mike McNally has got an opinion. And then Ed Nags, don't miss this interview. Our good friend Ed Nags is going to run 419 miles from Wenatchee to Corvallis, and he's going to do it for a very good reason. Our good friend Ed Nags will join me when we come back. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. Hey, welcome back to Save Mart. What can we help you find today? Uh, we're looking for a mattress. Oh, right this way. We got a large selection. We have this pillow top here. Oh, comfortable. We have more to choose from down here. Oh. I think I have the perfect one over here for you. I guess we'll take this one. you find it at Saymark. Full service at a low, low price. At Kennedy Group, we understand that buying and selling is more than a transaction, and it's more than just a house. This is where you will gather with friends and family and where a lifetime of memories will be made. But buying a home is more than memories. Oftentimes, it's your biggest financial decision. The agents at Kennedy Group understand this and provide real estate advice based on your goals and dreams. Call us today and let's find your happy place. Everybody's entitled to my opinion. Now, I did, when I did mental health work at the Chelan County Jail, I once asked a guy what he was in there for. Uh, he said, well, I'm here because my wife called the cops. And I said, huh. Uh, then I asked him if he liked being in jail, and he said, no, he hated it. 
and I asked him if he wanted to come back, and he said, no, of course not. So I told him, though, if all his wife had to do was call the cops and he got arrested, it was up to her, not him, whether or not he ever went back or came back to jail. But if I said if he had the courage to man up and consider that what he did to cause his wife to call the cops and never did it again and admitted that, then I told him that control over his future jail time or lack thereof was completely up to him. Uh, he probably won't do it, though, because uh, it's a lot easier to blame somebody else for our problems instead of taking responsibility for our own behavior. Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. I chose Pinnacles because they embrace and lift people with different learning styles. It's a school where I can be myself, creative, and be successful. There's a lot of hands-on activity and... You get to really connect with the community here because we're all one. We get to see each other often. It's a small building. The teachers care about you and make sure there is equity in the classroom. They take care of them as a whole. They see them as a name, not a number. My name is Courtney, and AmeriCorps has given me the opportunity to change careers, learn new skills, and serve my community in a meaningful way. I am so glad that I chose AmeriCorps. My service with AmeriCorps has allowed me to make a difference in the lives of people that I wouldn't have otherwise made. My service in AmeriCorps allowed me to make huge impact to community having fun. AmeriCorps gave me the opportunity to serve and use my skills for the greater good. I highly recommend serving with AmeriCorps. You will change your life. Central Washington Water is your solution for problem water. Whether you're on a well or municipal water, they can design a clean water system custom to you. Soft water eliminates water spots and scaling on fixtures. It protects appliances from hard water damage, saving you money. Soft water reduces soap usage that causes skin irritation and is a healthier choice to drink. Call for a free in-home consultation or stop by the store to have your water tested. Central Washington Water, your best water solution for home, pool, and spa. Nosotros escogimos Pinicos porque es una escuela pequeña. Todos los maestros son muy amables y son entendidos, entienden a las personas. Es un, un lugar pequeño donde los niños pueden recibir la mejor atención. Pueden apoyar a los niños en desarrollar lo que a ellos les gusta. Welcome back to the uh, program. We're here at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium. So we're at a baseball diamond. We've got a baseball legend to my immediate left. You're thinking, okay, we're gonna talk a little baseball with Ed Nags. Well, we're gonna talk a little baseball with Ed Nags. That's, that's down the road, but that's not really why we're here. Ed Nags is gonna do something really, really cool for a really, really good cause. It's close to Ed's heart. First of all, Ed, Ed Nags, everybody, former Apple Sox coach, Wenatchee High School baseball coach. Now he uh, assists with Corvallis for the, in the West Coast League in the summertime. I haven't seen you. How you doing, bud? I'm doing well. No complaints. No complaints, as do you. It's yeah. great to be back here and certainly be on this, this facility, spending so much time here, but, you know, a great day. And, uh, yeah, it's good to be with you. You've lived in the Wenatchee Valley a long time, but you're a California native, and you're kind of, you've been really mobile lately. Do you miss, you miss Wenatchee much? We don't get to see you much anymore. Correct. I miss it a ton. Yeah, I mean, I spent most of my adult life here, and... So, you know, raised, raised the kids here, you know, and coached and taught, and I, I do love it here. Just not the time to be living here for me right now, but uh, I've been back visiting a lot, see the kids and come back and do stuff like this. So, and then I've had a couple opportunities to be back here uh, coaching, so that's been fun. But it looks like we, we don't this year for some reason in the schedule. Yeah, we don't so. play Corvallis this year, but you always got a big hand whenever they, you were introduced or came out to coach their base after when you were with Corvallis. And Maybe they're glad to see I was gone and <laughs> it's somebody new. <laughs> no, it's, it was, it's been special. Yeah, those days to come back and be on this field, it was special. No People were saying, man, Ed looks good. And there's a reason Ed looks good. He's been running his butt off. He's been in training for something that I think is fantastic. You starting... May 1st are going to slap on the running shoes, I'm assuming a new pair, and you're going to run from Wenatchee, Washington to Corvallis, Oregon. You're going to run the whole route, 400 and 
what is it, 419 miles? 419 miles it is, yes. Um, first of all, and we'll tell you why in just a minute, how's the training going? You ran the LA Marathon, was it? Was I did, that was St. on- St. Patty's Day? Yeah, St. Patty's Day, so I did that. I, I, had done it, I did it last year, and then knowing that the opening day run was coming up in May, and I thought, you know, what should I be doing? And it made sense to stay on the regimen of being ready for that marathon in March and then just do a little different training as it leads up to May 1st. But uh, so, yeah, it just kept me training like I should. So you look great for a guy of your advanced age. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the let's talk about the inspiration for you to do this. It's a personal story. And if if I if I get too close, Ed, l let me know. But um, you got involved with the organization that's going to be benefiting your your run uh, in a personal way. Talk about that. Well, there, there's two organizations uh, that the opening day run will benefit. The, the first one is Trillium Family Services, which is an organization that uh, out of Oregon that uh, helps adolescents and their families deal with their mental and behavioral health and just all those things that that might entail. Uh, and I was introduced to them because my uh, son, Corey, um, spent time there, spent over like a month and a half there years ago. Changed his life. Yeah, he would tell you if you asked him today that, that, that saved his life. Yeah, he, he didn't think he was going to graduate from high school at that, when he was young. This is his sophomore year in high school and struggling with uh, anxiety and depression and just mental health issues that a lot, so many adolescents are. And so we were fortunate uh, after a stay in Seattle Children's uh, the summer before where they told us that we should look for more of a residential type treatment to help and it happened to be in Corvallis, Oregon. I wasn't coaching there then but that's so that's where Corey ended up going and like you say it changed his life and I've always wanted to do something to help them. I haven't been someone that's been able to just write a check and really help an organization. I thought I could use this platform here, baseball, the Northwest, the West Coast League, and uh, try and do something to help them out. That would be organization one. And organization two, which is familiar to uh, many around here, which is only seven seconds. You know, the, they are, their home is in Chelan. I mean, they're, where Trillium works in the state of Oregon, only seven seconds. I mean, they're working worldwide. That's a significant organization doing great work. Yeah, I mean, and they're trying to basically eliminate loneliness. And that ep they're trying to stop that ep epidemic that is so prevalent in, in society and here in the United States. And I came across them after uh, I learned about them three years ago after uh, one of our former Apple Sox uh, families, the Gebbers family, John and his wife Nikki, you know, lost their son to suicide and you want to help, what can I do? And the family had come out and said, if you would like to do something in Cade's name, please donate to Only Seven Seconds. I'd never heard of them and they were a young organization, but so I looked into them and I, you know, and I didn't care at the time, I, I donated, but then as I, got to know more and more about them, that became an organization I thought, you know, that is someone that I can, you know, get behind. And then, you know, it wasn't until, well, about a year and a half ago where I really, because I've had this idea of doing this run for quite some time, but it all came to me that I knew exactly why I wanted to do that run, other than something that was kind of difficult and silly to do. and see if I could do it and drum up some excitement for the West Coast League season. Uh, but I thought, you know, really, why would you do something like that? But those two organizations, one that is paired with uh, the Apple Sox, because only seven seconds the Apple Sox work together during the year. And then down in Corvallis, we do different events and things with uh, the Trillium Family Services, as it turns out. So that's neat. And so I thought I want to do everything I can to get money and awareness, certainly for adolescent mental health, but and get finances to those two groups to do the work, the great work that they do. You could do almost anything. You could hold a charity softball game. You could hold a car wash. You could do any number of things to draw attention to those, those two great organizations. You decided you're going to run. You're going to run from Wenatchee 
to Corvallis, uh, which is a long, long run. Now you are a runner. You've always been a runner as long as I can remember. You've always you just you run just to keep in shape and you like it. Was that just a natural fit? I mean, I'm, I, I want to I want to help these people out, so I'm going to run. They want to add you to Corvallis. <laughs> well, it seemed like kind of a crazy thing to do. It's a crazy thing to do, Ed. right? <laughs> it's 419 miles, uh, but. It, but I wanted to do something that was difficult that not everyone can do, but also that would take some, uh, I mean, I think everything's kind of mental, doing well. Uh, and for, you know, and I've been fortunate, but I know I struggle at times, like every, we all sure, do at absolutely. times. And, but I know for me, getting up in the morning and getting in my run is something that really gets my day off to a good start. You know, and I, my dad a long time ago said, you should go out every day and sweat. You know, so, uh, but that's, that's always been my thing to do. And I thought, well, I'm going to do something a little crazy. Hopefully, it'll get some attention. But also, the people look and say, hey, this guy's doing that. I, you know, I, can, I can at least give and, you know, and help out. Sure. So 10 miles in the morning and 5 in the afternoon. Split it up so I don't think it's as difficult as maybe it could be. And uh, I have a... Please tell me you have a support staff going alongside. You're just not going to camp on the side of the highway. My logistics coordinator. Thank you. So that is my uh, the the best son my parents had, uh, my older brother. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's retired, but he uh, I, I thought maybe he would. I called him here about a year ago. Said I got this idea I'm going to do. But I'm going to need some help. I wonder if you would maybe drive an RV that we're, I'm going to rent because I'll, I'll need to be traveling. This is kind of a you know traveling hotel. Would you would you do that for a week or two? And he says, Well, how long is it going to be? I go, well, basically the whole month. He goes, I'm doing the whole thing. I said, great. So he's a Bakersfield native now, but he and I will drive up, grab the RV uh, right there in Albany, Oregon, right outside of Corvallis, travel up here to Wenatchee and get here about the 30th, and then we'll leave on the 1st. So yeah, the brother's going to be handling logistics. He's excited, and it'll be us too, basically. We might have a visitor or two along the way here and there, but it's kind of us making the trek. We're going to be here uh, broadcasting Wake Up at Anchee Valley live on May 1st, that very morning from 7 to 8 a.m. You're more than welcome to come out and watch how the television magic happens, provided <laughs> there's television uh, excitement and magic happening. And at 7.59, you're, you're down the road. You're, you're off right here from Paul Thomas in your field. Yeah, we'll do the first 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll, Allie with the Apple Sox claims that she wants to run the first 10 with me, so Let's hold her to that, even though, bless her heart, she'll be running the Wenatchee Marathon in mid-April, which only gives her two weeks. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it'd be a little difficult to do that, but uh, she says she's going to do that. So. There are any number of ways to get from Wenatchee to Corvallis, but eventually you can't avoid, like, I-5 and, and things like that. What's a, do you, have a, do you have a, actually have a map drawn out uh, of your 15 miles a day and how you're going to go about doing it? Right, we know exactly where the 10 miles stop and where we will hang out for lunch and the afternoon and where those five evening miles, where we finish and where are we going to park the RV. I mean, we will be maybe talking to a farmer or two and asking if we could park on their road or on their farm for the evening. Uh, there is some rural running, which is good. I don't mind that a lot. Uh, when you say I-5, we will be on it for just the stretch of going over the river in Portland. That's it, because then we'll we're going we'll leave Wenatchee and basically go down through Quincy and to the Tri Cities. So we'll take that route that goes down. You know, Van. We, yeah, we will not be on I-90 or yeah. anything like that. And down through the Tri, not into the Tri Cities, we'll bump over to Benton City down and then there's highway 14 which is aka Houston, I believe. I highway 14 also known as the lewis clark highway yes yes which is on the north side of 84 i mean we have 84 that goes along oregon and you can't run on 84 no. it's illegal and you wouldn't want to so you're going so to be on the washington i'm on the washington side, the side all the way until we will get yeah so that's 14 the whole way and then we'll hop off it when you get close to Camas because that gets pretty busy and there's some side roads that parallel 
and it'll get us to Portland and then uh, Martin Luther King Boulevard is basically 99. So Highway 99 will be on the, on the east side of 5 and then we cross over to 99 west kind of as you get to southern Portland and then that takes you all through the, the, the small towns down into Corvallis. So that'll be a couple more questions for you. Yeah, this, I find this terribly fascinating. Uh, you have rest days, built in rest days. You're not going to do this like oh, seven days a week, right? You're going to have a couple of days where you're just going to let your body heal because you're asking a lot. Even for a guy in good shape like you are, you're still asking. That's asking a lot for your, your body. No, we're not. You're not. You're going to do it every day. Every day. I wanted to. I mean, that was part of it, too. The consistency. It's baseball. And we sure. play it every day sure. and the mental health piece of being able to hey you're not going to have any rest you've got to do that uh, yeah so and, it's daily it'll be diet. daily how do you i mean you're you're you're, at, you're asking a lot of your body so calorie intake and all that good stuff you're going to be eating like a horse or yeah i'm, I'm just curious. i've been nailing that down i mean yeah. rest is huge what you eat uh also i'm not running to beat any time right so one of the biggest things will be to keep my heart rate down as low as I can. So I'm not going to be going very fast. So that, that's, that'll help as far as repairing every night that I didn't go crazy. But yeah, I haven't done this before. I'm talking to people that, that have, but it's me. So yeah, I'm sure it'll be an interesting story as we go. How do people get involved? How do they help you out? How do they donate? How do they keep track of your progress? All that good stuff. Give me some of that good, gooey, juicy details there that we need to know. All right. Well, the website is openingdayrun.com. I found it right away. Did you, there you go. You got a Facebook page. You have a Facebook page. There's an Instagram. There we, yeah, there's Instagram, Facebook, as well as X, a.k.a. Twitter. Uh, my daughter, Emily, is great on the social media side. So she, we've done posting not too much to bug people but we've had some things so far maybe once a week uh, but we will be we'll be posting twice a day during the run and then on the website it does there's a spot where you kind of follow where we've been all the, the 28 and days. we can check in with you right I mean I love to on a regular basis get on board on like zoom or something and check in right with you. yeah and, and yeah and we're, we're planning to do that Cool. Yeah, Sweet. we'll be able to do that. And again, on May 1st, uh, we'll be doing we'll be live here at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium for the entire morning show. Ed will be leaving right before the show goes off the air. And you'll be able to follow him the whole time along. Oh, here's how. Here's another way you can help. Here you go, Ed. Here's 20 bucks. Wow. Thank to go you. Go to uh, Ed Nags in his opening day run. That's how you do it, folks. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to make sure I'm doing my part, buddy. Because you know I love you. Thank well, quickly, you. It's before great. we get before we uh, cut you loose, uh, opening day uh, is the 28th. How do, you, how, do you, how do you like the Mariners? They just missed the playoffs. One game last year. They opened up against the Red Sox at home. I know you still follow baseball passionately. How do you, how well, do you like I the was, uh, I did fly up yesterday into Seattle. I had to get up early, and I got up at 3 anyway. But that, also that was, I'm a, I grew up in Los Angeles, so I'm a, I'm a Dodger fan. I'm not, you know, crazy. I, I'm a fan of baseball, certainly a Mariners fan. Uh, so I did get up and watch that 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 uh, the games in a South little Korea. bit of that yeah. game in Santa uh, yeah over in South Korea and then followed that yesterday. Uh, I mean it, it's op you know again just that excitement of opening day and, and the name of the run that was something it took me a while. What am I going to name this? And I and it 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 just hit me one uh, one night when I woke up and was thinking of what the name should be. But it was but opening day run opening day. There's Optimism, uh, hope, you hope, hope. Hope's a great word. You know, and that's I, a great that, word. I mean, I think opening day for me, it's one of the best phrases in the English English sure. language, and uh, doesn't need any introduction. I mean, if you tell talk to somebody about opening day, they 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 know what it is. You talk to a baseball fan and say opening day, and they they look light at up. You, they smile. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So other sports have their beginning their you know season openers but baseball is different it's kind of signifies the beginning of spring and uh hope like you said that, you know that my team might this might be their year and so for me along with baseball and then mental health i mean if we have that opening day mentality and i've always told my teams this the apple Sox and even in corvallis where i talk about about 
having an opening day mentality and an opening day feeling. Every day. Yeah, hard to do. Yeah, there isn't a, there isn't a baseball player that started opening day and didn't lack that lacked confidence. Yeah. Opening day, it's opening day. I don't because you know I don't have yesterday beat me up when I was 0 for four or whatever. And you know life's that way too. You know, but if we can get up every day and have that opening day uh, feeling, I think that's good. And I know. Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, the Dodgers kind of quick pitched everybody and had the opening day early. It, it was kind of weird, but certainly when the real one is coming up for everyone, the Mariners and everybody, uh, I mean, it's just, it's exciting, you know, and you hope. Yeah, the Mariners continue knocking on that door. It's not easy. Everyone no, really. expects people to, you know, like the Dodgers, people down there upset because they don't win the World Series and they think, yeah, it's a waste. <laughs> It's, it's I have, harder. I have the double-edged sword. I'm a Yankee fan. We haven't won it since 2009, but, but you know that. Uh, it's NDAG's opening day run. Uh, again, it starts on uh, May 1st right here at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium, and it'll eventually run 419 miles to Corvallis. We'll be in touch. With, that still sounds insane to me. I get tired driving 419 miles. We'll be in touch with Ed uh, throughout the entire progress to keep him up to date. We'll put links on our website so people can find it real easy. Thank you. And uh, have fun. I guess we'll see you on May 1st, if not before. You got that. Thank you. All right. Ed Nags, who's in better shape than I am, and he's slightly older. And we'll be right back. Marathon in the books, 26.2. Not sure that's that smart to do that. 15 miles a day for the opening day run. Sounds a lot easier. Anyways, May 1st. See you then. Abby says thank you to all the hometown heroes making our community so great. If you know a deserving hometown hero, shoot us an email, hero at abbeys.com. Every week, we'll thank some of these heroes with a free giant pizza. Abby's, proud to serve your community. Be a hero tonight. Treat your family and friends to Abby's famous hometown hero pizza. This giant features our classic pepperoni, tasty Italian sausage, and crisp green peppers for a one-of-a-kind legendary flavor. Visit abbeys.com for a special pizza at a very special price. Family roles change with time. You may find yourself being an unpaid caregiver to a loved one. Caregiving can be rewarding, but also stressful. Taking care of yourself is vital. Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington has low or no cost services for unpaid caregivers, such as in-home support, care supplies, and counseling. Connect in your local area by calling Aging and Adult Care at 800-572-4459 and mention you're interested in caregiver support. <laughs> It's me, Blippi. Blippi's back on stage with his brand new wonderful world tour. Are you ready? I'm an excavator. Sing, dance, and make new discoveries. In Blippi, the wonderful world tour with special guest, Mika. My name is Mika. Yeah, it's nice to meet ya. For tickets and more, visit BlippiOnTour.com. Blippi, the wonderful world tour. Uh, it's uh, warming up rather rapidly. In fact, uh, rather surprisingly, it was 39 degrees when this show started an hour ago. We've already bumped up to 43 degrees, but our forecast high today is going to be right around normal, a little on the breezy side. The big weather maker and the most dramatic weather of the next seven days is really going to be tomorrow. We're going to have quite a bit of rain in the Wenatchee Valley with some snow at pass level, right around 3,500 feet, not a lot of snow. It's going to be heavy, wet snow. It'll dissipate pretty quickly. But if you're driving in the mountain passes uh, tonight, Wednesday, and Wednesday night and Thursday, you could find some winter driving conditions from the National Weather Service. One more look at your forecast. Lots of sunshine today. Not as windy as they were predicting. Yesterday they said it was going to be quite windy. Now it's going to be more breezy than windy. Uh, west wind 6 to 14 miles an hour will get up to 56, which is exactly normal for March 26. Clouds begin to roll in tonight. 36 for the overnight low. No real wind to speak of. Tomorrow morning, the snow level is going to be at 1,900 feet. By tomorrow afternoon, the snow level will be at 3,700 feet, which means we are going to get some rain, perhaps some significant rain, a 100% chance of rain for the Wenatchee Valley on Wednesday. And look how cool it's going to be. Only 47 degrees, a very raw day expected. Rain begins to taper off on Wednesday night. It'll be done 
by Thursday morning. Uh, we'll get down to 36 Wednesday night. Thursday, we start the transition. Still cool, but lots of sunshine and a high of 53. And look at Easter weekend, mid-60s for the holiday. That's it for us. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. He's a celebrity. The what? Celebrity. Celebrity. Yes. And a president of the United States of America. Join us as we go nuts. I was going to say, was, wait. For a crunchable, lunchable. Cheers. Munchable mm. tree. Mmm. Mmm. Welcome to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. You know, growing up...